Hello everyone. Um, since I've already gone through creating render layers and setting up the ambient occlusion, um, I'm just going to speed through this and show you how to do the batch renders again properly. Um, so I've already gone ahead and created a scene with a bunch of blocks and I've already lit it. Um, I'm actually going to render the regular layer and let's just see what that looks like. Oops, nothing there. Okay, so you can toggle them on or off by just having them selected. You can kind of tell what is selected right now and what's not. So right now I'm just going to do the master layer and I'll show you the lighting I added. So it's just a simple um, fill light with a bluish color and then a bright directional light with shadows. I made sure to turn on ray tracing. And for the ambient occlusion layer, um, I I applied it to all these objects and set let me show you the settings after this is done. I think in class I might have shown you or I might have forgotten to change the color of the ambient occlusion. So if you open up your hypershade and look at the material the color of the material. I think I just left it at a at the default gray originally. Um, just like Lambert 1 is here. Um, go ahead and switch it to white um, on your ambient occlusion material. And I think during the lecture last time we ran into problems where you had to adjust the levels and um, anyway this this will just save you an extra step. So from there um, let's go ahead and set up the render settings so go up here. Well, actually, let's make sure we have master layer done, selected. Then go to your render settings, and let's go ahead and just give it a name for now. It'll be blocks lighting, and I'll switch the format to let's do a PNG. And name dot number dot extension for the file format, and give it a padding of let's just do two, and then I've keyframed the camera to move from frame one to frame sixty, so I'll go ahead and do the end frame at sixty, and I'll make sure to specify camera one. And just so this doesn't take too long, I'll go ahead and switch it to HD 720 instead of 1080p. And let's see, I think that's it. And as you can see, I have the master layer selected. Um, if I were to select this one instead, it would change it to ambient layer. But let's go ahead and just do the master layer for now. Let's go ahead and hit close, and then hit file save save scene and to do the batch render you just have to go to well make sure you're in your rendering tool set and go to render and then batch render never mind that and again you can see the status of how it's rendering here at the bottom and they'll go ahead and pause it once I see that it has started and I'll just restart the playback or restart the recording of this video when it's completed and then I'll go ahead and do the the batch render for the ambient occlusion layer okay so now it's starting on the first frame It'll take about looks like it's about half a minute per frame. I'll go ahead and pause the recording now and resume it after it's complete.
so now that it's finished rendering, um, I've noticed that it's actually rendered out both the master layer and the ambient occlusion layer. If you open up the folders, you can take a look at the files. Um, but something went wrong. The um, when it rendered out the master layer, it tried to combine both the ambient occlusion layer and the master layer, and it just messed them all up. Something. I, I think you need to toggle off the ambient occlusion layer for that one. But then if you look at the ambient occlusion layer on its own, um, th those came out perfectly. So uh, what I'm going to do now is go back into Maya and this time I'll just toggle off the visibility of the ambient occlusion layer and try re-rendering it. And this time I'll tell it to not render the ambient occlusion layer by clicking this button. It has a clapperboard with a check mark. Um, so I'll make sure the ambient occlusion layer on the display layer portion is invisible by hitting the V as well as checking off the box in the render layer tab. So let's go ahead and try that <clears throat> and see how it works. So I'll go ahead and go back to the render settings. Make sure everything's set correctly. Should be block sliding, .png, etc. Frames 1 through 60. Correct the camera. Okay. I'll go ahead and click on render and then batch render. I'll hit OK. Or continue rather. And I'll go ahead and pause this again once it starts rendering. I'll just pause it now. Alright, so now that it's finished rendering, rendering again, I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the images that were rendered. First I'll start with the master layer. And I'll just click the first one. And I'll do image sequence. And that'll import, that'll basically import this as a video clip into Photoshop. And it'll take into account all the rendered images down the line. So I'll just go ahead and hit open. And then, in my case, I rendered this at 24 frames per second. I forgot to change the setting within Maya to 30 frames per second. Yours should be 30, but um, if, in case it's not, just go ahead and leave it, or change it to 24. Um, okay. <clears throat> And then I'll go ahead and open up the ambient occlusion layer. And I'll do the same thing. I'll do an image sequence. I'll go over to the ambient layer. And I'll click the first one. I'll have to click image sequence again. And I'll hit open. Again, 24 frames per second. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll stay within this one. And I'll just go ahead and select this layer within the ambient occlusion area. So I'll click this layer and then I'll drag it over to this this one. And as you can see, it's a little bit off, so I'll just go ahead and rearrange it. It should snap right into position, just like so. And because this is an ambient occlusion layer, what I'll do is change the the transparency or the layering attribute to multiply. And so now you can see that the ambient occlusion is layer is just darkening what is already there behind it. So I'll just toggle it off, toggle it back on. So you can see how big of a difference it makes. <clears throat> and okay, so I'll do one more thing. I'll go ahead and just add a sky. Just create a simple shape by clicking this guy and then dragging across and because last time I used this it created the gradient um, it reused it again so I'll just I'll just leave it this time though I'll drag this to the very back uh, over here on the layers and so now um, this guy is going to show up behind everything else and you can see there's a strange outline happening with I think it's just the end oh no it's both layers looks like it's a uh, I don't really know what that is, but it shows up as an outline.
let's just go ahead and leave it for now. And you can actually export this as a video clip and then import it into Premiere if you want to do any kind of post processing, like um, adding title bars or stringing additional clips together. But for now, let's just go ahead and create the video clip. So I'll go to File and then Export. And which one is it? Oh, I'm sorry, Export. And I'll do Render Video. So it brings up an, a couple options here. Um, under File Options, you can specify which video format you want. And I'm just going to go ahead and compress it to a QuickTime movie. That way it doesn't take up as much space. And I'll give it a name. I'll just do Blocks Composited. And I'll specify Folder. For now, I'll just put it on the desktop, just so I don't have to dig around. And... Let's see. QuickTime export. That should be good. All right, so go ahead. And, I'll go ahead and hit render. And depending on how fast your computer is, it should render out pretty quickly. Okay, so now I'll just find that file on my desktop, and there it is, Blocks Composited. And I'm just going to right click it, and if you're on a Mac it should open up with um, QuickTime anyway, but I'm just going to open with QuickTime Player on a Windows computer, and it should open it if you have it installed. So there it is, and if you hit play it should just play it nicely. And there you go. In the next video, I'll show you how to start creating a, a video, a string of videos using Premiere. But for now, this should be good.